Sunday's third video for you is first new story is from Eratia two days ago. I did a video on religious freedom uh, in Eratia, religious repression or freedom in Eratia. Several viewers contacted me and they shared their inputs. I want to share the inputs with you. Uh, second new story is from Somalia. Former President Abdullahi Farmajo intends to construct a lavish house in green zone of uh, Mogadishu, Somalia's capital. His uh, spokesperson revealed the construction of this house which has led to the start of a controversy. So new stories from Amhara region where we know that Fano commanders are being hunted down. Their houses are being encircled. We have a new story about a Fano commander whose family is being harassed as his brother is in detention. Fourthly, a new story from Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital where uh, the government, uh, led by PM Abi, today organized a Thanksgiving program at Maskell Square in the honor of Ethiopian police. When will the civilians be honored who fought, who sacrificed their lives uh, in uh, Ethiopian conflict? Lastly, we have a new story about Tigray. What is the security situation, law and order situation in Tigray? Why is that we are uh, seeing reports about lawlessness, about robberies, thefts in Tigray? What's happening there? Is Tigray government trying to cover up what is happening on the ground? Are crimes being covered up? Is there any real security threat? from inside Tigray, uh, faced by Tigray government, the people of Tigray. Uh, firstly, viewers, first story is from Eritrea two days ago. I did a video about religious uh, freedom and repression in Eritrea. We uh, shared a statement of your state department as well, which said that uh, Certain uh, Christian denominations and faiths were under repression in Eritrea, and in recent days, uh, some Christian uh, community members have been arrested too as well. Several viewers contacted me. They said, uh, "Sajid, uh, yes, some Christian denominations are not allowed in Eritrea." like uh, Pentecostals, all confirmed that Pentecostals are not allowed to worship freely in Eritrea. Secondly, they said that Jehovah's Witnesses are also not allowed to worship freely. Otherwise, they say that uh, uh, Orthodox Christians, uh, uh, Catholics, Evangelicals as well, they are not prohibited from praying. A viewer shared a picture with me of a church. He says that this is uh, evangelical church in Asmara. Evang evangelicals are not banned from worshipping in Eritrea. But again, they confirmed about Shia sect that uh, Sunni Islam is allowed in Eritrea, but Shia sect is not allowed. And they say that uh, Government does not want to create religious divisions that more uh, sects, more denominations, they lead to divisions. And secondly, they say that uh, some Christian denominations, they have their own agendas. And Christian missionary work is not allowed in uh, Eritrea because missionary work has its agenda as well. Mission organizations have the agenda as well. That is why they are banned in Eritrea. So they try to defend Eritrean religious freedom record. At the same time, they confirm that some Christian denominations and Muslim sects are not allowed to worship freely in Eritrea. And a viewer interestingly said that uh, Isaiah Savoki is from evangelical denomination. I don't know about that. Just sharing what he said. Uh, second new story is from Somalia where former President Abdullahi Farmajo 
is uh, going to build a lavish house in green zone of Mogadishu, Somalia's capital. His spokesperson appeared on Capital TV and there he announced that uh, the former president had agreed at the request of the people that he was ready if a house is built for him in green zone of Mogadishu. And after that we are seeing uh, the start of a controversy. His opponents are accusing him of corruption, that he stole public funds and he now wants to build a lavish house using public funds. That is why he's saying that uh, people are donating. Actually, it's not donation. It's uh, public uh, money which he stole, uh, which he wants to use to build a lavish house in green zone. So, uh, we uh, saw controversy in Ethiopia still ongoing. That Ethiopian PM is building uh, a lavish uh, palace in uh, uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital. And uh, it, 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 this project uh, is the costliest project uh, in years in Ethiopia. Uh, after its completion, it will have more money spent than GERD, Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. Now we are seeing the controversy in uh, Somalia though. In Ethiopia, uh, the palace which uh, is being built is for official residence, official office of PM. But in Somalia, uh, Abdullah Framajo is building his personal home, his personal house. Now, will he press ahead with this construction? That remains uh, to be seen. Uh, next new story is from the Amhara region of Ethiopia. We know that a crackdown on Fano, Fano commanders, Fano supporters is underway. Their commanders are being chased. We know that Zamine Kasi's house in Gajam was surrounded by security forces in Mirawi, but he could not be arrested. Masri Shah's house in Gajam was also encircled. He could have been arrested too. But his family members have been arrested. It has been confirmed that his brother is in detention. His family members, some of them are missing as well. Some are missing. His brother is in detention and uh, his family, remaining family members, they are being chased as well. So his family is... Uh, the victim of harassment by security forces. Same is the case with other Fano commanders' families that uh, police is encircling their houses. Uh, they're trying to trace uh, the whereabouts of Fano commanders. That's why their families are being targeted as well. It shouldn't have happened. Uh, a few months ago, Zamine Kasi, Masri Shah were being honored for their a role in survival campaign. Now you see what's happening that their families, their sisters, their brothers, they are being arrested, detained, harassed. That is what's happening in the Amhara region of Ethiopia these days. For the viewers, PMRB government today organized a Thanksgiving program at Maskell Square in Addis Ababa in the honor of police force. You can see pictures on your screen. The pictures are from Maskell Square Adis Ababa, where PMRB, Behano Jula, Army Chief, top uh, army uh, officers, government officials, diplomats were part of this uh, ceremony, this program. PMRB thanked police. He said that police's role is commendable. It played a key role in survival campaign and he uh, urged police to meet the highest professional standards. Now, my question is, we have seen several programs held in the honor of forces, uh, programs to honor the services of ENDF members, regional forces, FANO as well, and now police. Where are civilians? Uh, shouldn't the government honor civilians too? Are they just in Ethiopia to be victims of this conflict? Have you organized any ceremony to honor just civilians, not forces, not militias, just civilians, unarmed civilians? Who are the victims? Who are the victims of this conflict? Thousands have died, thousands maimed and killed and injured. 
how many ceremonies uh, have tagarai and ethiopian governments organized to honor just civilians just women just children just elderly all focus is on forces militias because government wants to build stronger forces to contain their enemies uh, civilians should be honored as well because they are the worst the most vulnerable victims of the ongoing ethiopian conflict and still their suffering is ongoing lastly viewers the tigray people say sajid you're not speaking about tigray what the security situation there in tigray uh, are people living peacefully well i think i have spoken a bit in previous videos situation is not very satisfactory why uh there is shortage of food no cash is entering tigray no food is entering tigray security structure collapsed because uh, when war started in tigray all regional forces police they started fighting against uh, government forces so their security mechanism collapsed and tigray is gradually rebuilding its police yesterday tigray graduated some newly trained police members tdf members they are being incorporated into police laws are being formulated during this entire process some gangs are emerging we know that uh, tigray was weaponized when uh, the war was going on uh, tigray youth was armed to fight and still uh, the youth has not been disarmed so there are armed young men who have nothing to eat and they're involved in robberies in in uh, theft in extortion businessman is suffering people are living in fear they have to be up all night to protect whatever they have and tigray government you you must have seen that in recent days tigray leaders like debrasian gata jorada uh alim gobre why others they've been seen holding meetings with people especially southern tigray where we know there are some serious uh, problems they want to assure the people that tigray government is trying its best to control the situation but situation is not under control uh, because economic situation is worsening as long as this economic uh issue is there security situation will keep on worsening employees government employees have not been paid for months teachers not paid for months unemployment across tigray so what will unemployed youth do of course uh, it will not uh, die of hunger it will snatch from the others whatever others have in terms of food in terms of eatable in terms of money in terms of belongings so what is required is that uh, there must be delivery of aid to tigray on regular basis then its distribution resumption of basic services opening up of tigray so it can start uh, its uh, commercial activities its border Uh, with other uh, regions other countries if it, it wants to you need economic activity in tigray which is at zero level now that is why crime rate is increasing and is ethiopian government interested in solving tigray's problems i don't think so the federal government is hoping that people of tigray will rise against tplf led tigray government that is how tplf will be uh, will disappear from political scene of ethiopia so that is what the government is hoping because we know that last year government said in a statement uh, when it uh, decided not to enter tigray that uh, the people of tigray would bring change in tigray so that is what government is hoping tigray government of tplf will not surrender people will keep on suffering 
So that is why for the sake of the people, Ethiopian leaders, federal leaders, uh, regional leaders, Tigray leaders, they'll have to sit, talk and resolve the issues immediately. The longer it takes, uh, the more serious will become the suffering of the people in Tigray. Thank you for watching.